Most deer hunters don't mind battling the elements. That usually means dressing warm enough to battle extreme cold. But what about extremes on the other side? You know, extreme weather can be a challenge not on just your body, but your equipment. When you're talking about hunting in extremes, heat is the worst. I'm Gordy Cron. I'm Mark Kaiser. I'm Dan Schmidt, and this is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. You've spent your free time creating utopia. Food plots, set stands in the perfect location, did everything possible to increase your chances for that nice buck in the fall. Then, all those plans take a hit, all thanks to the uncontrollable factor of Mother Nature. Usually deer hunters, in dealing with weather, are facing cold and snow, and many times that can be a plus. But what happens in the other extreme, when it's too hot? Do you stand a chance of seeing deer in the woods? Extreme weather hunting? Hey, I'm all for it. Cold weather? Hot weather? Hot weather, you know, a lot of people stay home. They say, ah, it's too hot. Those deer aren't going to move. Those deer move. But you got to know what you're doing in these situations. I've done it in Florida, Texas, Wyoming. It can be hot. It can be 90, 95 degrees. Heat index of 100 degrees or more. Can you believe that? Deer won't move, will they? Yes, they will. But you have to have everything under control. Deer are going to feed no matter what. They got to feed three times a day, even if it's hot outside and they're gonna feed on the high moisture content foods like food plots and farm crops and things like that and when you know where those are and how deer are getting to them you're really gonna have a leg up to hunt them. You take that peak of the rut day where it is 20, 30, 40 degrees above normal. I mean we're talking hot. Do you really think breeding shuts down? No, it does not. Deer movements and feeding patterns are just a couple of changes that can affect deer in warmer than expected conditions. Water sources become very important if you've got extremely warm temperatures. I mean, it only goes to reason if it's 90 degrees out, deer are going to need a lot of water. And the, the beauty of that is, is you might even catch bucks going to water sources during the middle of the day. They might have to get up out of their bed and go to those water sources. So, you know, when you're doing your, your, your scouting during the spring and summer, you need to add water sources to those uh, deer magnets that you might have to rely on. It's 80 degrees on November 10th in Iowa. Guess what? That buck, he has his winter coat. He's running, you really think he's gonna be running around out there? trying to find those while he's wearing a parka, moon boots, snow pants, a whole nine yards, gloves. You know, I mean, that ain't gonna be fun. That's gonna wipe him out because just by default, he's gonna probably lose 25 to 30% body weight during the rut, just trying to find these does. So does he really wanna put all this extra pressure on himself? Does he really wanna strain his body so bad that he's out there pushing it when it's that hot. No, what they're gonna do more often than not is they're gonna shift their movement to the cooler portions of that 24 hour period. You know, during the night, after the sun's went down, that last half hour in the evening of shooting light, on through the night, and then into the next morning before those temperatures really start to rise. So when you've got that super hot rut, what you really need to do is you need to get out there in the mornings. Get out there in the mornings, hunt those, hunt those doe bedding areas. You know, because that is, during legal shooting hours, that is your best chance of intercepting Mr. Big. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. 
Mossberg, build rugged, proudly American. Nikon, the next generation in hunting optics. Cuddyback, more deer, fewer blanks. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology. Apply, dry it, and go hunt. Cole, do you realize what's right here? Coming up next, Mark Kaiser is in Wyoming with his son Cole. Cole has a tag and is looking for a big whitetail, but it is hot. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Matthews. Hunting in extreme weather conditions can test even the best of hunters. Most are set with the cold, dressing in layers to fight off snow and wind. But the heat? That's another story. You know, you can do it if you have three things under control. Scouting, knowing where the deer are and where they're coming from and where they're going to precisely. That requires a lot of glass time. Number two, water situations. Is there a pond? Is there a creek? Is there a puddle? Is there somewhere where a deer are going to drink? If it's 90 degrees, the deer need to drink. You got to know where that is. Also, with the water considerations, food considerations. They're going to eat high moisture foods, which means they're probably going to be eating green leafy vegetation when it's that hot out, if you can find it. Number three, scent control. Biggest thing there is. Have to have your scent not only under control, but you have to know how to get to that stand without alerting those deer, because let's face it, we sweat when it's that hot outside. Cole, do you realize what's right here? This tree stand I've been sitting in for I don't know how many years. Hunting with your kids, it's one of the most enjoyable aspects of the entire hunting tradition. Mark Kaiser's favorite thing to hunt is anything with his son Cole. And it's pretty evident that Cole has picked up a few tricks from the old man. Now this past fall, he wanted to add a whitetail to his Wyoming big game count. Now, he had shot a whitetail when he was a little younger, and it was a nice buck, but it wasn't exactly a monster buck. He wanted to shoot a little bit better buck before he headed off to college this coming fall. It wasn't hard to think about where we were going to hunt. Cole had been working on a ranch, spending his summer hours doing all kinds of chores. And in return, including a little bit of cash, he achieved hunting rights on the property. We upped our scouting. We started putting out trail cameras. We were watching all the good hay fields, alfalfa fields, where the bucks love to hang out in the summertime and boldly hang out. You could watch them in daylight hours. Our hunt started out watching some big alfalfa fields. Getting on those deer early, in the dark in fact, and waiting for them to pass by in the dawn hours. What we discovered was there was a heck of a lot more mule deer than there were whitetails. The mule deer were just coming off the fields in droves. The whitetails, well, they were scattered here, there. We were getting, you know, a look at them, seeing some nice bucks, but we weren't getting the close encounters. Now, Cole wasn't opposed to shooting a big mule deer. We just hadn't seen one that would fit that definition yet. He really still wanted that whitetail, that Wyoming whitetail, to add to his resume of Wyoming big game hunts. The temperatures for the first few days of the season were beyond hot. In October in Wyoming, you can get frost. Nice days in the 60s. Our temperatures for that hunt were jumping into the 80s, even the mid 80s. So the deer were moving fast, getting off the fields early in the morning and being a little lackadaisical about coming out in the evenings. Cole, he had his own activity schedule as well. As a teenager, he's got a nightlife that's busy with his buddies. So some mornings when we were out hunting, I was the one doing most of the glassing, doing the night on time. He was spending a little bit of time snoozing beside me. We got to watch a lot of deer. We got to spend time together joking. And we struggled a little bit until one hot afternoon. Now what happened on that afternoon? Cole and I had seen some deer go into some brush early in the morning, but it was just a little too thick to hunt. So we decided to back off, grab some lunch, and come back in the afternoon as we're sneaking along an edge of a field, trying to make a big downwind circle of the area and then get to another vantage point to watch for the evening, 
I spot a deer moving in the brush beside us. Now, why they didn't just run off, I have no clue. But the minute I put my binocular into the brush and glassed it, I spotted a really good buck. It was a nice, big body, mature buck. And he was kind of just acting like he didn't care that we were around. He had seen us, he had stood up, but I felt like, you know, he was in the shade, it was so hot, he just didn't want to leave that area, and he was hoping we'd pass by without noticing him. Well, we noticed all right. Cole got ready to aim, and that buck just stood there. Now, the shot was just a little bit tight through some brush and through some wire, but Cole was actually off to my right, just enough where he had a clear view of the chest. The camera doesn't show that, but what the camera does show, yeah, smoke and a solid hit. Our hunt was just about over. The big job now, hey, we had to track that buck. Cole and I regrouped. We reloaded the muzzleloader and decided that it was best just to go right in. That buck looked like it had been hit hard with the Hornady bullet. Sure, there's a lot of smoke, but where there's smoke, there's fire, and where there's fire, hopefully there's a dead buck. I sent Cole ahead and we got to the location of the hit. We found a little bit of hair, a few specks of blood, but no buck was in sight. Hey, no worries. That's not uncommon at all in any deer hunt with a firearm or a bow. We moved in the direction where the buck head took off to where he fled and we started picking up a little more blood, a little more sign, and then gradually more and more blood. Well, it was a thick, brushy area. And the buck, he really didn't go far. Right there in front of us, as the brush opened up, hey, it was Cole's buck. A beautiful, big, fat, roly-poly Wyoming whitetail. It's a pretty darn nice deer for around these parts. These bucks hadn't gone through the rut yet. They were sporting, hey, their winter coats and a layer of fat that would embarrass any Weight Watchers candidate. Cole and I went up there, I congratulated him, and that buck was more than he wanted. Look at this main beam, how it wraps around. Oh right? yeah. Right? But all his points are good. Yeah, he's got good length all the way around. That buck was the perfect trophy, the perfect ending to uh, our uh, father-son era. Hey, I'm sure we're gonna have a few more hunts in the future, but Cole, he's off to West Point. He's gonna be busy with his studies and his new military career. I'm hoping as time goes by, he's gonna be able to slip back. We're gonna be able to do a few more hunts. It won't be like it was when he was growing up though. And that's why I really, really hope you take advantage of every opportunity to go hunting with your kids. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Boss Buck. Now you're getting serious. Most deer hunters can tell stories all day of shots they've made or shots they've missed. It's the stuff of deer camps every year. But most also have stories of hunting with their families, memories that can mean more than the size of a deer. Steve Martilla has that today. He is taking his daughter Beth on her first deer hunt in Illinois. What a way to create a father-daughter memory. My daughter's been going out with me hunting since she was six years old. But still, here she is now, 21 years old, and I have yet to get her a deer. We've had all sorts of close calls, but it just hasn't come together, so I am excited as heck. One of my clients has allowed me to take her out on her land and kill a doe and a management buck. I'm thrilled. The first day out, what we do is we hunt, we head to this redneck blind that's in this back corner of a food plot. You know, that ends up leading to a big field. I know she's gonna kill a doe back here. I know, quite honestly, the only thing I'm worried about is that she makes the shot. Because frankly, I raised my kids shooting bows, not firearms. You know, so they don't have the experience with it. Man, I'm telling you, I had nothing to worry about. We no more than get settled in and the deer start coming. It is not long at all when we have a doe out there that she wants to shoot. It's quartered towards us a little bit. As I said, I'm a little concerned about her, her shooting skills. So I tell her, you know, Beth, we can go, you can go ahead and make that shot. But if you do, 
just go ahead and put the crosshairs right in front of that front leg. You do that, you'll throttle it. I was, I'll be honest with you, I was a little nervous. Man, I shouldn't have been. <laughs> she absolutely throttled that doe. We got her her first deer. So now it's time to get serious. Now it's time to go out and do some buck hunting. The, the temperatures were a little warm, but we're hunting a ground blind, so she's got to be covered up and stuff, so we don't, so the deer don't see the reflection of skin inside the blind. It's warm, but this food plot I'm taking her to this afternoon, it is right on the edge of all sorts of bedding activity. I'm confident that we're going to get a shot, and that's one of the keys to hunting, to hunting warm conditions. You have to be set up closer to where the deer are. You have to because they're just not gonna move as much. Sure enough, we're settled in. We're just starting to get going and here he comes. I look out of the corner of the blind and there he is. It is the management buck that we've come in to try to hunt. It is gift wrapped and you know what? Dad doesn't pay attention. He thinks that Beth is on this deer and ready to shoot. But when it can, and I, I whisper to her, okay, when I grunt, take your time and shoot. Thinking that she's already on the deer, but I'm focused on the camera. I'm focused on the camera. Man, this is coming together. It is gonna be great. So there he is. Ah, that's not ready to shoot. She doesn't have her head down on the gun. So now she's scrambling to get down on the gun. And again, she pounds it exactly how she's supposed to. I'll tell you what to see my little girl's reaction when she killed that first buck I have killed some absolute toads over my life despite all the great experiences I've had hunting there was nothing I will never forget in my life the expression on my little girl's face when I turned that camera over to her I'm so happy it, it, frankly, it's the highlight of my career. I, I was so privileged to be able to share that with my daughter and now with you guys. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Millennium Outdoors. Comfort to hunt all day, all season. Analogics, protect your herd with the power of science. Carbon Express, shoot better with Carbon Express. Bush Hog, performance you can count on. And by 10 Point Crossbow Technologies, there is no substitute. Growing Big with Steve Bartilla. As deer hunters, we all want to build deer numbers. I mean, it's just a natural desire. Now, in certain pockets of the whitetail range these days, the deer numbers are way lower than the habitat can support. But we also have to remember that too high deer numbers are not a good thing. If we get too high deer numbers, what ends up happening is that the habitat starts getting destroyed. Now, what you can do to cheat the deer population higher to be able to allow the land to support a higher number of deer, food plots, agricultural crops, and a serious, steady feeding program. Those things will jack the deer numbers higher. The catch is that you still have healthy deer, but your habitat is literally being destroyed. The risk of inflating those carrying capacities, inflating those deer numbers, is that you get a drought crop failure, any type of crop failure whatsoever, and that is going to literally decimate that deer population. And when it is above the carrying capacity that the habitat can naturally support. Remember, you want to match the carrying capacity of the habitat to your deer numbers. If you ever want any ammunition to use against the anti-hunting crowd, whitetail populations left unchecked destroy the habitat. When they destroy the habitat, you know what? Massive death, starvation, and suffering is soon to follow. You don't need to spend a ton of money to get quality in hunting gear. Take these Nikon Pro Staff 3S binocular. It is good quality and for less than $140. 
ammunition falls into that same category. You want accurate ammunition. Today I'm testing the Hornady Precision Hunter lineup. Why is it a little more accurate than all the rest? Well, for starters, it was designed around Doppler radar data, not the old style chronographs, which really isn't that old. And what chronographs do is they capture data, maybe two or three points in the entire track or flight of that bullet. Doppler, it gets data every one to two feet. And what Hornady found from all this data is that the bullet was flying kind of goofy throughout that pattern. The reason what they decided and what they determined was that the tip, a polymer tip, was heating up and that polymer tip was causing a deformity and some flight inaccuracies. Now, to solve that problem, Horney created a new composite tip. It takes heating better. That heating, that's what was melting the polymer tip and it created and designed a thicker shank. So this bullet, the ELDX bullet, extremely low drag expansion bullet, would expand at any velocity. You're gonna get screaming velocities right out of the muzzle at 100 yards or so, 3,000 feet per second with some calibers. And long range, you're gonna get velocities dropping down to 1,600 feet per second. But the ELDX bullet, it handles it all. Regardless of the velocity, if you make a good hit, it's gonna create a devastating wound channel. Now where the ELDX really shines, hey, that's long range. At 600 yards and beyond, don't shake your head at me like you're never gonna shoot that distance. What if that's your only chance at a big, big whitetail buck, a booner? Well, most modern hunting rifles, they can handle those shots. Top it with a good scope like the Nikon Monarch series and use Hornady Precision Hunter ammo. You can make that long shot. Be sure to check deer and deer hunting out online and on Facebook.